I bet the day will not pass by without looking at yourself in a plain mirror. When you look at the mirror, you can see the image of yourself. Your image, just like the images of the other objects, in a plain mirror is formed by the regular reflection of light rays. How would you describe the image formed in a plain mirror? This type of mirror always forms an image of an object that appears behind the plane at which the mirror lies. So we call this image a virtual image. The image is as far behind the mirror as the object in front of the mirror, upright, and has the same size as the object. Some mirrors magnify the image of an object, like the dentist mirror, and mirrors that let us see more of what is around us and diminish the image of an object, like a rear view mirror of a vehicle. These mirrors have curved surfaces and they are called spherical mirrors. The spherical mirrors are mirrors whose polished surface is part of a hollow sphere of glass or plastic. In a spherical mirror, one of the two curved surfaces is coated with a thin layer of silver followed by a coating of red lead oxide paint. Thus, one side of the spherical mirror is opaque and the other side is highly polished reflecting surface. There are two types of spherical mirrors, concave mirror and convex mirror. The stainless steel spoon is considered a spherical mirror. The front side of the spoon that curves inward is a concave mirror, while the back side of the spoon that curves outward is a convex mirror. Get a stainless steel spoon and look at your image on the front side of the spoon. Notice that the moment you get the spoon closer, you get a magnified image, and when taken afar, you see an inverted image. Try also to observe your image at the back side of the spoon as you move the spoon towards or away from you. Let us look at how the spherical mirrors affect light rays to form images with different properties. In discussing the formation of images in spherical mirrors, terms used in connection with them should be clarified. Think of the spherical mirror as part of a sphere. The center of curvature is the point in the center of the imaginary sphere of which the mirror is cut. The aperture is the angular opening of the sphere that encloses the mirror through which the light rays enter. It also gives the size of the mirror. The pole is the midpoint of the curved surface of a spherical mirror. It is also called a vertex. The radius of curvature is the radius of the sphere of which a spherical mirror is a part. It is the distance between the pole and the center of curvature. The imaginary line passing through the center of curvature and the pole of the spherical mirror is called the principal axis. The principal focus, also called a focal point, is a point where the light rays parallel to the principal axis meet after reflecting from the mirror. The focal length is the distance from the pole to the principal focus measured along the principal axis. For mirrors of small aperture, the focal length is half of the radius of curvature. See how the light rays parallel to the principal axis and which strike the surface of the concave mirror come together toward a common point called the principal focus. Since they converge on being reflected, the concave mirror is described as a converging mirror. In the case of the convex mirror, rays parallel to the principal axis after reflection appear to come from a point F situated behind the mirror. In other words, rays of light appear to diverge from F. This point is called the principal focus of the convex mirror. Convex mirrors are also called diverging mirrors. The principal focus of a convex mirror is the virtual focus because the reflected rays do not actually pass through it but appear to do so. Now how can we tell the nature of the image formed in the spherical mirrors? Images formed by spherical mirrors can be constructed by the ray diagrams. With the ray diagram method, you can determine the position, orientation, size, and type of image of the object by tracing the path of light rays, the incident and reflected rays. You can also determine the nature or properties of the image using the mathematical formula. That's the mirror equation. But in this video, we will focus on the ray diagram method. The general rules for image formation on spherical mirrors using ray diagram method or ray diagrams. Rule 1. A ray of light which runs parallel to the principal axis after reflection 
passes through the principal focus of a concave mirror or appears to pass through the principal focus of a convex mirror. Rule 2. A ray of light passing through the center of curvature in a concave mirror or a ray of light going towards the center of curvature of a convex mirror is reflected along the same path. Rule 3. A ray of light passing through the principal focus of a concave mirror or appearing to pass through the principal focus of a convex mirror becomes parallel to the principal axis after reflection. Notice that Rule 3 is exactly opposite of Rule 1. When applying this method, just consider two rules that are convenient for the ray diagrams. Remember this for the image of an object. The position of the image is the point where the two light rays intersect. The location where the image is formed tells whether it is a real or virtual image. The image is real when light rays are converged in the real space, that is, in front of the mirror. Real images are inverted and can be projected onto a screen. On the other hand, a virtual image is formed when the light rays from the object don't actually intersect each other after reflection. Although they appear to do so when they are produced behind the mirror, virtual images are always upright and cannot be projected on a screen. Let's now have the ray diagrams for the concave mirrors. The ray diagrams require pencil or ball pen, protractor, and ruler. To start with the ray diagrams, draw a line which represents the principal axis. Then with the protractor, draw an arc as your concave mirror. Mark the pole on the center of the curve. Using a ruler, from the pole, measure 2.5 cm. You can use any convenient measurement for you. Mark this point, the focus, or F. This time, measure a 2.5 cm distance from the focus. Mark the point with this distance from the focus as the center of curvature, or C. Draw dashed lines at the back of the concave mirror. For the concave mirror, there are six possible positions where the object can be positioned and an image is formed. For case number one, let us consider an object that is at an infinite distance. When the object is at infinity, the incident rays coming from the object are considered parallel to the principal axis and are reflected at the principal focus. Remember that the position of the image is the point where the light rays converge. In this case, at F and in front of the mirror. Therefore, when an object is at infinity, the image is formed at F, it is highly diminished or merely a point, and since it is formed in front of the mirror, the image is real and inverted. In case 2, the object is positioned outside C. Just a representation, let us use an arrow as our object. Again, it is positioned outside C. When doing the ray diagrams, consider the rays from the top of the object. Note, just use two light rays from the object. In case 2, ray 1 follows rule 1. Light ray coming from the top of the object is parallel to the principal axis. Upon hitting the surface of the concave mirror, it is reflected passing through the focus. Consider rule 3 for the second ray. The light ray coming from the top of the object is passing through the focus and is reflected parallel to the principal axis. Remember that the point of intersection of the two rays represents the position of the image. Since the light rays come from the top of the object, draw the top of the image in the point of intersection of the light rays. Then, Extend the image to the principal axis. The bottom part of the image is touching the principal axis. So when the object is located outside the center of curvature of the concave mirror, the image is formed between the center of curvature and focus. It is diminished, real, and inverted. In case 3, the object is located at the center of curvature or C. The first light ray coming from the top of the object is parallel to the principal axis and is reflected passing through the focus. The second ray is passing through the focus and is reflected parallel to the principal axis. See that when an object is placed at the center of curvature, 
The image is formed at the center of curvature, also the location of the object, below the principal axis. Since the distance of the image is the same as the distance of the object from the mirror, the image and the object have the same size. The image is real and inverted. For case 4, the object is located between the focus and the center of curvature. Let us use the rule 1 for the first light ray and rule 3 for the second light ray. Here, the two light rays converge at a point beyond the center of curvature and below the principal axis. Therefore, when an object is placed between the center of curvature and focus, the image is formed behind or outside the center of curvature. The image is larger than the object or magnified. It is real and inverted. In case 5, the object is at F or focus. Let us use rule 1 for the first light ray. This light ray is parallel to the principal axis and is reflected passing through the focus. Follow rule 2 for the second light ray. A light ray that passes through the center of curvature and is reflected along the same path. What can you notice on the two light rays? Yes, the two rays are parallel to each other and would intersect at infinity. Case number 5 shows that when an object is placed at the focus, the image is formed at infinity. The image is highly magnified, real, and inverted. In case 6, the object is very close to the mirror. It is located between the principal focus and the pole of the mirror. Similar to case 5, let us use rule 1 for the first light ray and rule 2 for the second light ray. What can you notice on the two light rays? The two rays are divergent and appears to meet behind the mirror. When you extend the rays behind the mirror, then you can locate the position of the image. When the object is very close to the mirror, like when it is placed between the focus and the pole, the image is formed behind the mirror. Remember, an image that is formed at the back of the mirror is considered as a virtual image. The image is magnified or larger than the object. It is virtual and upright. After having the ray diagrams, what conclusions can you make on the formation of images in the concave mirror? Right, as the object moves closer to the mirror, the image location moves further away from the mirror and the image size grows or becomes magnified. You have seen that in cases 1 to 5. The image becomes virtual when the object is very close to the mirror or when it is placed between the focus and the pole. With the identified properties of the images formed in the concave mirror, can you give some common uses of this type of spherical mirror? The shaving mirror or makeup mirror forms an enlarged and upright image of the face when the mirror is held closer to the face. Large concave mirrors are used to focus sunlight to produce heat in the solar furnace. They are also used in solar ovens to collect a large amount of solar energy in the focus of the concave mirror for heating, cooking, and melting metals. Concave mirrors are widely used in headlights of automobiles and motor vehicles, torch lights, railway engines as reflectors. The light source is placed at the focus of the mirror, so after reflecting, the light rays travel over a huge distance as parallel light beams of high intensity. The dentist mirror is also a concave mirror. A concave mirror is used by dentists to observe the large images of the teeth of the patient. This helps dentists to locate problems easily in the tooth. Let's now move on to the ray diagrams for a convex mirror. We will follow the same procedures in the ray diagrams for a convex mirror with that of a concave mirror. Again, start by drawing the principal axis. Measure and mark the positions of the pole, focus, and center of curvature along the principal axis. Remember, you just need two light rays to locate the image formed in the convex mirror. Consider an object at a certain distance from the convex mirror. Let's use rule 1 for the first light ray and rule 2 for the second light ray. The second light ray passes through the center of curvature and is reflected along the same path. It appears that the light rays meet behind the mirror. 
extend the light rays, and draw the image at their point of intersection. The light rays were from the head of the object, so the point of intersection is where the head of the image is located. Then, extend the drawing of the image to the principal axis. Here you can see that the image formed is located behind the mirror, is smaller than the object or diminished, virtual, and upright. What if the object is moved closer to the mirror? What do you think are the properties of the image that will be formed? Let us use the same rules for the light rays in this case, rules 1 and 2. What can you notice with the image? Still, the image is formed behind the mirror, diminished, virtual, and upright. What conclusion can you draw from the formation of an image in the convex mirror? Yes, the image of an object located at any distance from the surface of the convex mirror is always formed behind the mirror, diminished, virtual, and upright. Can you identify some common uses of the convex mirror? Convex mirrors are widely used as rear view mirrors in automobiles and vehicles because they give a wider field of view. These mirrors enable a driver to see what is behind the vehicle. Convex mirrors are also used for security purposes in various places. They are placed near ATMs so that bank customers can check if someone is behind them. The security personnel can view a wide part of the convenience store or department store using convex mirrors put on the ceiling. On roads, driveways, and alleys, there are convex mirrors angularly placed especially at curves and turns to improve the visibility. I hope this video lesson helped you in understanding the formation of images in spherical mirrors, concave and convex mirrors. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe in this channel, and hit the notification bell to be updated for the related videos. Thank you.